Using your 19 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and remove the lug nuts. Once these are all off, we'll take the wheel off. Take the wheel off. Using a 21 millimeter socket, go ahead and remove the nut off the outer tie rod. I'm going to go ahead and use a hammer to hit the forward side of the knuckle here to pop this tie rod end out. Using an 18 millimeter socket, go ahead and remove the lower nut on the sway bar end link. Go ahead and tap that bolt out. So we're going to use a 21 millimeter socket on the clevis bolt and on the forward part of the bolt is a 17 mil. Go ahead and remove that nut, set that aside. Now once you have your vehicle supported, as you probably already do on jack stands, you want to go ahead and use your regular jack to put underneath the lower control arm. We're going to slightly go ahead and put some pressure on this control arm and slowly lift it up just a little bit. What we're doing is releasing all of the strut pressure on the control arm, just so it's not dropped all the way. Now you know you're in a good position by raising the control arm. If you can just pull that clevis pin or the clevis fork bolt right out. Using a 21 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and loosen the upper control arm bolt here. want to keep it on a few threads here and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bonk the upper knuckle here to release that strut the control arm be careful once this releases from here because now the only thing holding this knuckle is the lower ball joint When you release this, this will swing, the knuckle will swing out. Now I'm going to go ahead and lower the jack. Let's go ahead and disconnect our battery terminals. So we're going to go ahead and use a 10 millimeter socket and extension to remove this bolt here. And this is our battery hold down block. Once you remove the block, we can now go ahead and take the battery and remove that from the vehicle. So first you want to go ahead and pull this unit up and offset that aside that has some vacuum tubes to it. And we're going to loosen up our relay box here. Just pry in on the tabs inward. There should be three of these. And pull up and loosen that. Now on our particular battery tray, there is a 13 millimeter nut down inside here, and then there's one over on the edge. I want to go ahead and remove these two nuts. Now we're going to go ahead and loosen the retainer tabs from the wiring harness on both of these corners. Just going to use a pry tool, pop that off there so that is separated. I'm going to do the same in the back. There's a third nut down here for the battery tray retainer. I'm going to go ahead and try and remove the battery tray and set the relay box back down. So I want to go ahead and remove this vent tube right here and just on a plastic adapter here we can go ahead and pop that off. Set that aside. Now we're going to use our 18 millimeter socket and extension to remove these four nuts. Now as you loosen these here, you're going to see the strut start to lower. Be careful. 
because that strut might fall through and come out the other side. So if you can, try and reach around the fender. Grab that on the inside as you lower it and remove that nut. Let's go ahead and use that knuckle to push down on that control arm. And let's go ahead and work that strut down. Now what I want to do is we remove the clevis fork from the uh, strut and spring assembly or shock and spring unit itself. So we're going to go ahead and use our 21 millimeter socket to go ahead and remove this bolt. Now while we're in safety glasses, you want to go ahead and strike the fork so you can go ahead and work it off of the unit. Before installation, you want to make sure that the clevis fork sleeve here is cleaned out. If there's any heavy rust or scaling, you definitely want to make sure that this is cleaned out inside here first. Otherwise, it's just going to make for hard installation. Ours looks good. So what we're going to do is, before installation, we're going to apply a light coat of grease on the inside. We're also going to apply a little bit of grease to the bottom of the shock and spring unit. For installation, there is a raised mark right here, and that lines up with the slot right here on the clevis fork. The spring and shock unit has a stopper on it, a little raised ridge on the inside, so you're going to tap this all the way up until that locks, locks into that, or stops at that. You want to go ahead and take your bolt, make sure that that is clean. We're going to apply a little bit of anti-seize compound to those threads. And go ahead and install. Let's go ahead and snug that bolt down. I'm going to go ahead and feed the strut back up. I'll go ahead and snug these down. I'm going to go ahead and torque the bolt of uh, the nuts here to 80 foot pounds. With those torqued, we can now go ahead and install that little retainer right there and just press it down. Next, we want to go ahead and get our battery tray back in. And install the forward mounted nut first. Move to the other two. Go ahead and snug these down. Now let's go ahead and get that relay box down onto those tabs. You want to make sure that you get your wiring harness reclipped back into the battery tray right here. You can reinstall this unit on the post. Line that up, push it down, and then we'll reconnect the back into the holes right there. Let's go ahead and get the battery block lined up and snug down that battery hold down block. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall your battery terminals here. Go ahead and line this up. Hold that in place. So what I'm going to do now is apply some pressure to the lower control arm. I'm going to work that clevis fork back into place.
So what we want to do is go ahead, we can line up our clevis bolt. And if this isn't lining up perfect, we can line this up and just tap that. Let's go ahead and tighten up this upper control arm ball joint nut. Install the outer tie rod. So our ball joint was spinning inside, so we couldn't tighten up this nut. So what we're going to use is a 21 millimeter wrench on the nut, and then we're going to hold the bottom with a 10 millimeter. So when trying to line up the sway bar end link with the control arm, the holes don't line up. So what we're going to do is use our jack to raise the control arm just a little bit to get these holes to line up. And go ahead and put the washer on, get our nut started. I'll go ahead and snug that down. And then we'll lower the jack. I'm gonna go ahead and torque the tie rod nut to 80 foot pounds. I'm gonna torque our sway bar end link bolt to 100 foot pounds. The upper clevis to spring and shock unit is gonna be 45 foot pounds. Our lower clevis fork to control arm is 110 foot pounds. I'm gonna put our 17 millimeter wrench on the bolt head and torque this down. I'm going to torque the upper control arm to the knuckle to 60 foot pounds. So let's go ahead and get that wheel installed. We're going to start all of our lug nuts by hand to prevent any cross threading. I'm going to go ahead and torque the wheels down to 95 foot pounds.